hi there everyone and welcome to this video what we're going to talk about today is uh, the job queue functionality within uh, business central so um, what do you use uh, the job queues for within business central well um, you use them when uh, you want to queue a particular task um, within business central in the background um, you know, and you just want that to automatically run um, in the background, perhaps just once or perhaps many times during the day or on a particular day. So uh, you can basically use the, the job queue entry screen within Business Central to automate the running of a specific task. Um, so let's get into it. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to search for a page here called job queue entries. Um, and over here, we basically have the full list of job queue entries or jobs that are listed or scheduled to run um, on this particular company. OK, so uh, it's important here. Um, job queues are company specific. Um, so just uh, consideration there for um, when you're setting up or, or maintaining your job queue entries. And uh, what I've done here is I've just created a, a job queue entry for um, code unit 1281, which is update currency exchange rates. Um, I'm just gonna talk through that um, here so we can see what um, is involved with the setup of a, a job queue entry card, okay? So I'm just on the job queue entry card here and um, first field that I can set is the object type to run. And I've basically got a selection of report or code unit here. So I guess this depends on what it is that you want to run on your job queue. Um, here I've selected code unit, but you can select report. Um, and then the object ID to run, when I drill down into there, it's showing me the uh, code units because I've selected the object type to run as code unit, but should that be set to report, then you would see your reports in the object ID to run. So here we're saying, do I set um, um, the object type to run as code unit or report? And then in the object ID, you see the code units or the reports that you can select from. So caption and description, guys, they speak for themselves. It's just uh, giving us an idea of um, what the um, object is that we've selected on this uh, particular job queue entry card. Um, and we have the parameter string here. So you can use this in conjunction with uh, your, your code, I believe, within the, the um, code that you're using to run this particular job queue entry. And you can set a parameter string to, to help you sort of run particular things within the uh, the, the um, job queue there. Uh, we also have the job queue category code. So you can use this to basically organize your job queue. You know, you might have hundreds of jobs running on your job queue and you can basically assign a job queue category code here to help you organize your job queues. So user ID is uh, is quite important here. Um, that's the user ID from whom uh, will that this job will particularly run. So uh, this user ID is set to admin, and that's because I'm logged in as the admin user and I created this job. Um, just be careful. You know the user that runs a job obviously should have sufficient permissions to run that particular job. Um, and yeah, there's other considerations that we need to take when. Um, we're uh, choosing the user that runs a particular job. Okay, so we've got maximum number of attempts to run here. So you can set this uh, above zero if you want to, you know, so if the job fails for whatever reason, you know, there could be a, a dependency on uh, another job within Business Central, or there could be a dependency on uh, another job outside of Business Central, you know, depending on what you're trying to do on the job queue. Um, and you could what you could need to set this to to um, something greater than zero. You know, if it fails once, it can try um, again. Um, and the rerun delay here. So if it fails, um, it will run again based on the value of this field. And we can delay the start of the job the next time around if uh, we wanted to do that. And we put uh, a number of seconds in this field to to do that. 
And then we've got the, the last ready state. Um, so it tells us um, when the, the job was last in a ready state. Okay, so that's in line with the status field here. So the status field right now is on hold, um, but you can have a few others of those. So we won't go through them all today, but you've got other things like in process, when the job's running, you've got ready, when the job is not running, but it's ready to run. Uh, you could have um, error as well, you know, where the job uh, the job has failed for whatever reason. Um, but that's telling us um, what the last ready state, when the job was in last ready state, sorry. Um, and then we've got the uh, earlier start date time. So this is when do we want this particular job queue entry to, to run? Uh, what's the earliest time that we want it to run? Um, do we want it to expire? Again, we can just drill down into this field and set a time that we want that to expire. So we then have the job timeout, which is set to 12 hours. And this is basically just saying, you know, if my job runs um, sort of longer than 12 hours, then I should stop. Um, so the status we've already been over. Um, and then if I come down to the recurrence, um, fast tab here so this is basically just telling us uh, when we want this particular job to run okay so I can set the check boxes here to say I want the job to run from Monday through to Friday or Saturday and Sunday as well or I can unmark these booleans just to say I only want them to run on particular days okay so this is uh, based on if you want the job to run um, every day or a few days within uh, within the week um, if you want the job to run every day, but you want it to run uh, at the same time, what you can do is set a next run date formula here. Okay, so see, I've put in um, a next run date formula of one day. That's now set the recurring job to, to yes, but it's also deleted uh, the recurrence on the weekdays. Okay, so because I've set a next run date formula, it's saying I won't run on a particular day. I'm just going to run every day one day from the time that we tell BC to run the job. So the starting time and ending time basically identify what hours, if any, between which you want this particular job to run. Okay, so if I only wanted this job to run between nine and five, I can set these two fields like this, right? So again, this depends on, on what you want to do. You know, it could be a one-time run that you want to happen on a particular day. Uh, it could be a multiple run, uh, so multiple times that you want this job to run. Uh, and it could be that you don't want this job to run outside of business hours, or it could be that you want it to run outside of business hours, inside of business hours, whichever way you want to set that up, you can use the starting time and ending time to do that. And uh, in conjunction with that, you can also use the number of minutes between runs. You know, if you want it to run every 60 minutes, you can put 60. If you want it to run every five minutes, you can say, I want it to run every five minutes there. And just notice here, because I've assigned a number of minutes between runs, it's now removed the next run date formula because that's a one-time run, whereas the number of minutes between runs is saying that I want it to run in between this time period. So we next have the inactivity timeout period, which is basically just saying if um, it's inactive or it can't find anything to do uh, within uh, five minutes, then it will set the job to uh, on hold with inactivity timeout. Um, so we see that on quite a few of the integration jobs that you might have between uh, BC and CE when you use the out of the box um, integration. Okay, so that's all of the fields on the job queue entry card. So we've got a few other actions up at the top here. So I've got set status to ready, which basically what that will do is it will set the status here to ready. So it will go from on hold to ready. So if I say set status to ready here, and you can see here job queue uh, entry is now in ready status, and you can see that it's going to start tomorrow at midnight. So I can also say set on hold and you can see up at the top here, if you want to edit the job queue entry, you must first choose the set on hold action. So I can do that up here or I can press set on hold and you can see I can now edit the job again. 
So the restart, I guess, speaks for itself. Um, you can use that when um, the uh, job queue entry has failed uh, and your status is set to error. You can say restart and see it changes it back to ready. So the run once in foreground here, um, if you click that, what it will do is it will create a temporary non-recurring copy of this job and run it once in the foreground. Then it says, do you want to continue? You can say yes or no. Okay. So if you want to run the job just as a one-off, um, you can do that using this action. Um, and then show error. Basically, if the job is in error state right now, this button will show us the error that caused uh, the, the job to fail. Um, and then just on this page here, uh, we've got a job queue report request page. So if I was using uh, an object ID type, uh, object type rather, sorry, of uh, report, um, I can set uh, the report request page. You know, when we uh, run a report in Business Central, we need to set up that report request page before the report will run. Um, I can use this button to set up a report request page for the report that I'm running on this particular job queue. Um, I can use uh, show record uh, for seeing the record that's uh, associated with this entry, but you can see here with this particular job queue entry, there is no record associated. So we get that message. Um, and just finally here, we've got the log entries, which if I drill down into there, there isn't anything right now. Uh, but what this is, is basically just a, a table which shows us when the job has run um, and what status, you know, was it successful? Was there an error? Um, is it still in process? That's the sort of information that you get here. So you can see from the fields, the type of information that you get um, that you that you might need to view when uh, you've uh, you're looking in the uh, in the job queue log entries. Okay, so that's really everything that I wanted to talk through on the job queues. Um, I hope you found it useful. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.